take that to your Rakesh suit. Beyond the optics, do you believe that there are real issues between India and Nepal that remain unresolved, the, the territorial dispute being one of them, plus the growing China presence, especially economically in Nepal? Well, yes, Rajdeep. Uh, there are issues that need to be resolved between India and Nepal because, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Nepali nationalism, mm -hmm. most often than not, takes the form of anti-Indianism. And anti-Indianism is then used as a stick to beat India. I've seen this again and again. Even innocent statements are often taken out of context. Indian films at times, mm -hmm. there was a question that was raised in one of the Indian films uh, maybe unless you are a film buff, you won't even remember it, called Chandni Chok to China. Mm -hmm. And there, there was this comment about Buddha was born in India. And cinema halls in Nepal were burnt because they thought that India was claiming Lumbini. Now, the fact that this film made by some Bollywood, uh, made in Bollywood, mm -hmm. had this comment need not have given rise to these kind of resentments. But yes, what happens is that very often, as I said, Nepali nationalism takes the form of anti-Indianism. Insofar as uh, a so contradiction how, so how do you point about the boundary is concerned, yes, go ahead. I'm afraid Please officials ahead. are going to be unable to mm -hmm. talk about it because this is something that has been a lasting legacy of the Oli government. The Oli government made it a constitutional amendment, adopted it, and has put it in the flag of Nepal. So therefore, how is a Nepali foreign secretary supposed to negotiate with an Indian foreign secretary about the territorial boundary of his country, which has been adopted by parliament? I mean, it just beats imagination. Can so I'm afraid this is something that is going to require political resolution and not official talks. So, uh, you know, in a way you're, you're, you're pointing out to the difficulties that lie, but do the optics work? The, you know, Mr. Modi has gone there for the fifth what time in the last seven years. Are optics enough or is that a limitation in a way of a very personalized style of diplomacy? Well, you see, Prime Minister Modi made two visits in 2014. His first visit was an enormously successful visit. His second visit was for the SARC summit. Mm -hmm. Yes. After that, we had a lot of downturns in the India relationship with Nepal. We had the 2015 constitution adoption. After that, there was what Nepal accused India of a blockade. And then there was a slowdown in the relationship. Mm -hmm. After that, the visits took place in 2018. So in 2018, Prime Minister Modi made a bilateral visit after KP Oli had visited India earlier. And then he visited again a couple of months later for a BIMSTEC summit meeting. Mm -hmm. Then thereafter has been this Kalapani, you know, the territorial dispute at the Lipu Lake Pass and Kalapani and all that where uh, Nepal introduced new maps after India introduced new maps. And then Nepal proceeded to make that into a constitutional amendment and change its own territorial boundaries and maps. So therefore, um, so optics this the now is a new beginning. Prime Minister Modi has gone to Lumbini. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 2014, in his very first visit, he had said that he would like to visit Muktinath, which is a Vishnu temple, Janakpur, obviously Sita's birthplace, and uh, Lumbini. Now, he, is, he did the first two that I mentioned in uh, 2018. He wasn't able to do Lumbini. So I think he has completed his pilgrimage part of it. Whether we are going to see concrete movements towards issues like the territorial issue or Another uh, difficult issue, namely the 1950 Peace and Friendship Treaty between India and Nepal, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, which also is seen as a bit of a wrinkle in the relationship, whether these can be resolved and how these can be resolved are going to be issues that we will have to look for. Uh, 